Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And in this one, we are taking a look at the best, most popular, and most reliable strategies for Town Hall 11, 10, and 9. What I love about these strategies we're going to take a look at today is that they don't require you to have maxed out heroes for the most part, um, and they have a lot more room for error. So you don't have to be perfectly executing these attacks. And um, they're much more accessible for players who don't have the max accounts and aren't in these CWL caliber wars. So we're going to take a look at um, Town Hall 11 first, then we'll move down to Town Hall 10 and then Town Hall 9. Um, the strategy I'm going to focus on for Town Hall 11 is going to be what's called the Queen Walk Vomit Attack. The idea is that you do a short Queen Walk and then you basically vomit a bunch of bowlers into the base. Um, the power of this is that you get the funnel created by one side with your queen walk. Then on the other side, as you can see here, you start off with uh, witches, a few bowlers, kind of like in a Town Hall 10 witch bowler attack, and then like a healer or two to help keep them up, especially if there's a wizard tower right there, like there is. And they'll funnel the other side for you. Now this is possibly easier to execute than a 10v10 three-star um, attack, if you're attacking an anti two star base because the idea is you just got to get all the bowlers um, the queen that meets up and then the warden of course will follow you get them all into the core you take out the eagle you take out the infernos and then from there oftentimes the healers will switch back onto your queen and you'll have your queen walk up at the end of the attack um, also if the witches can survive that's even better and a big chunk of bowlers so you can see just two jumps through the base no need to bring any heals the uh, the healers can heal the bowlers and also the queen plus you have the warden uh, eternal tomb so there's really no need to bring a heal just as many jumps as you need to get through the the meat of the base and then rages for everything else and uh, you can see like I said at the end um, what you have up is typically the queen with the healers the warden and then a few extra bowlers to help um, and that's going to be enough to take out the rest of the base typically so the important thing is that you're funneling well with the queen walk on one side the uh, witches and possibly a healer or two on the other with a few bowlers sprinkled in and then the queen meets up with the main force that cuts through the core as quickly as possible grabs the eagle and the inferno towers and then from there typically the queen will um, the healers will switch back onto the queen and you have this queen walk up at the end with the ability and the level 50 queen can take out um, the remaining defenses. So like I said, against an anti two star base, which is still probably the most common thing, we don't see anti three star bases much outside of competitive CWL type wars. Against the anti two star bases, this can um, be a very easy three star if done correctly and you don't need to have the max heroes, just you know above 40 obviously. Um, and it can be done. So let's take a look at one more. We're going to have two attacks for every town hall level. Um, this is going to be the same strategy, uh, give or take a, a few adjustments to the troops. And you can see again, we have an anti two star base, which um, is set up to defend against town hall tens going for the two star. But these bases are very susceptible. And granted, you can do this against anti three star bases. It's just more difficult and you have to um, try to take advantage of certain aspects of the base and be a little more creative with how you do it um, but it's not limited to two star anti two star bases um, so anyway once again drops down the queen with a rage oftentimes you can just drop the uh, the warden with the queen but I think he chooses not to for whatever reason um, typically don't even bring a golem because the problem is the healers will switch on to the golem so you want to avoid bringing a golem instead brings the a few giants and the bowlers eternal tomb from the warden was very early not sure if that was a mistake or not but it doesn't matter as long as all the bowlers are going into the base here and um, you don't even need to jump to the core often because all the defenses in this case are accessible from the um, the ring that's not in part of the core so there's no reason to even enter the core. Just let the bowlers walk around. Um, the eagle will go down quickly. Not a big deal. Brings a heal instead, which, like I said, isn't often that effective. But if there's a giant bomb and the healers aren't nearby, it can keep up a big group of bowlers. So in this case, the heal actually gets pretty good value over the wizard tower and some other defenses right there. Um, so great job. Crushes this base. And one thing to keep in mind is because you don't have the golem, um, as soon as you drop the witches after the queen walk has started, the eagle will likely lock on to the witches. So having one or two healers helps keep them up. 
because until you have like your king down and a bunch of bowlers, the eagle is probably going to target your witches. Um, it can help to keep them spread out. That way the eagle can't target them all at once. But that's something to keep in mind is what is the eagle going to target? This is something you can kind of start to gauge from experience after doing this attack a lot and make sure the eagle isn't too... Um, doesn't do too much damage initially because you don't have that golem. You shouldn't because it, the healers will lock onto it and they won't heal your queen or your bowlers. But just keep that in mind. Without a golem, the eagle is kind of a loose cannon. Um, you don't know what it's going to target necessarily. So the town hall is last building to go down. But like I said, all the defenses were reachable from outside the core. So nice how that worked out. Two town hall 10 attacks to take a look at. Um, we'll go down to number 20. This one, uh, starting with the Falcon, have to show it. I know I made a video on it, but um, it is one of the Town Hall 10 strategies that does not require maxed out heroes. I've heard people do it with 30-30 heroes, and I, you can maybe even do it with lower, but if you have below 30, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to 3-star at all. Um, but a lot of um, room for error in terms of a non-maxed out account as long as you have the Valks maxed and the Bowlers maxed and all the important stuff like that taken care of. Uh, but the basics that we talked about, if you haven't watched the last video and you're a Town Hall 10, be sure to check out the Falcon attack strategy. But have the King meet up with the Queen and then dump in all these Valks and Bowlers and just rage and heal them through the base here. Once again, the Heroes, the CC pulls everything into the core. Good base design for it, relatively compact, and the pathing through is pretty solid. The spells can cover that entire core, so uh, it's a good value, and this base goes down pretty quickly with a nice uh, addition of a few hogs to target some of those defenses that the Valks kind of miss as they go through. So good stuff here. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen, I've or at least I've, I've had people message me saying they've, they've done this with hero levels way below 40 40 and as long as you have the fundamentals down and the base is good for it and like i said my last video talks about what types of base you want to look for as long as that's all met um this one can can really crush the base without having to be executed perfectly as long as the basic fundamentals are there so nice attack to Yaggle Waggle. We'll take a look at one more, which is a, a strategy I'm sure you guys are familiar with, but I want to emphasize it again for, uh, once again, I would say not quite as as good if you have non-max heroes and or certain troop levels, but um, it's definitely better than like a hog attack because it takes less precision and you can kind of get away with taking out some bases, even if the troops aren't completely maxed, or mainly the heroes, and you don't execute it perfectly. This one is the Witch Bowler, of course, and I'm kind of split between doing a Queen Walk on one side or just doing Witches on both sides. I think ideally Witches on both sides is better, especially if you can get away without dropping healers. Like the top group up here, there are no healers on those Witches on the left side of the screen there. And that's ideal if you can choose one side that doesn't have any wizard towers. Um, you, you don't have to be that worried that the witches will die. If you can get away with that, I think it's better to send the queen into the base because that way um, you're more likely to get that second inferno tower taken out that's deeper in the base. And then the witches can just clean up the rest of the base. The queen walk is better if you have the max level queen and if you're not worried that the bowlers are going to not get through the entire base, but oftentimes it's pretty far to get the, the second Inferno taken out. You can see right there, um, it would be it would be diff difficult for the bowlers to really get to it. Um, so dependent on the queen to take out some of these buildings. A few hogs, always a good addition. Like to see that. Um, oftentimes it's not a huge difference whether you put 12 bowlers in the base or like 16 bowlers in the base so substituting in a few hogs is often better because the bowlers will probably all go down at the same time anyway especially if you already have the queen going into the base so keep that in mind and um, all he needs is really one side of witches to make it around and in this case the witches that have the healers on them do and also that's the side that didn't have air defenses so of course you want to drop the healers on the witches 
switches that are not going to be near the air defenses so that way you don't risk losing healers um, unless there's like a weird seeking air mine or something so two good town hall 10 attack strategies don't have to have max heroes um, a little more lenient especially if you go against bases that don't have the best designs you can take advantage of them for sure and you can go back and watch some more specific videos i've made in the past on those two attack strategies for more information two town hall nine attack strategies now and this one is it's good in the sense that you're not going to rely on your heroes for the dps basically this is a little bit of a pekka walk which i made a video about way back um but it was a popular video and i think a lot of people found it as a cool technique you um drop the pekka on the other side to kind of meet up with your queen this one was a very abbreviated pekka walk i believe but the idea is you're just going to send in these very high DPS troops, um, the, the heroes, the Valks, um, Pekka, and CC bowlers. But you can also get away with just more wizards and maybe some additional CC Valks if you don't have access to the bowlers. But it's almost like the Falcon in that you're just throwing all these high DPS troops. The only difference is I'd recommend a Pekka instead of just bowlers and Valks like in the Falcon. The reason being without the single Infernos and with the level 4 Pekka, um, the Pekka is more effective in most cases than bringing Valks or Bowlers, um, assuming you already have like some Valks or Bowlers. So I like bringing the Pekka, um, especially because it can kind of help funnel one side with the Pekka walk, which I think was used. I kind of missed it. It, was, it might have been a very brief Pekka walk, but the idea is that it can just take out some trash. You don't have to waste Wizards or anything doing that. And then if, uh, if the core is is big and a lot of buildings can be reached from the core as long as you get everything to the core it doesn't matter where they go from there they can take out kind of like the falcon about 75 percent of the base and then you don't know how they're going to split but you know you're going to have enough troops left up to finish off what's left and once again um like six falks a pekka bowlers both heroes this base is toast fast forward to the end here nice attack and this is again if you have like 10 10 heroes you can do it for sure because um, the dps is there even though your heroes aren't going to be doing most of it the troops if they're max um, can can do the heavy lifting for the damage so one more strategy a little bit different than all the ones we've seen so far in that it actually has some significant defensive targeting troops but i think it fits in well with this video because it's an attack you can do with um, somewhat lower level heroes and um, it's a very forgiving attack if you make a few mistakes it you can kind of get away with it oftentimes this is just suicide heroes and lalooning the rest of it takes a bit of practice laloon pathing is not easy to learn i'm not even that good at laloon myself but you want to try to lure out the cc which typically isn't that hard sometimes hasten a few balloons and just get the air targeting troops lured out which is often a witch and a baby dragon and maybe like a wizard or something so you get the cc lure you take it out with your heroes and a poison and you can see he's not even going to get an air defense the queen does not get the air, de air defense very very minimal value from the heroes um, maybe like an archer tower or something but that was pretty much all he got but at town hall 9 with pretty good pathing and um, good spell placement you can just law luna base once the cc troops are down as long as you drop a rage and a skelly on the queen and you just gotta be patient as well in case there's a bomb tower nearby that way the skellies have time to take out the queen without being targeted by splash damage just be nice and patient especially if the queen's on a lava hound and uh, you can destroy bases like I said, with 10-10 heroes, you might need like a wizard or two to help take out the CC troops, but that's all your heroes have to get. If they grab an air defense, which they probably can if it's close to the outside, that's just extra. But if you take out the CC troops and just grab like just one or two defenses, you can laloon the rest very easily with good pathing. Just, you know, practice the spell placement and you can see a swag spell here, 12 plus balloons left up at the end easily took out this base so practice this as well um, if you're a town hall nine and i hope this video helped thanks for watching these are some attack strategies you should be looking to use at town hall 9 10 and 11 especially if you're facing um you know kind of medium caliber bases you might not have max heroes you're in the um somewhat more casual but still competitive wars Look to use these strategies. They're going to be your best go-to. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.